right now on 12 News at 10. The winter storm has arrived in Arizona. Rain chances also on the rise for the valley. I'm tracking that hour by hour and snow totals for the high country. I'm Gabriela Becerra in Goodyear. New charges filed against the driver in a deadly cycling crash. We'll share the community's reaction. He was caught trying to bring drugs into a Maricopa County jail. And now a former detention officer was sentenced for being part of a drug ring. And we'll bring you the latest on a crash in Tempe where a group of firefighters narrowly avoided being run over. A pretty scary situation. 12 News at 10 starts right now. Well, here we go again. Look at all that white up in the high country. We're starting with a winter storm watch that's dumping snow in the high country and rain in the valley. Let's give you a live look at the train depot in downtown Flagstaff. And if you look at the street lights, you can see that snow coming down. Flagstaff expected to see plenty of snow and heavy winds. And yes, we did schedule this train to roll through <laughs> right on time. Perfect timing there. Well, here's a live look right now at Arizona Snow Bowl. A windy night. Windy up there. I'm just going to let Caribe fix her microphone. Uh, it's blowing uh, and really coming down at 9,500 feet. Skiers and snowboarders definitely hoping for plenty of fresh snow just in time for the weekend. Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for 12 News at 10. I'm Kadiva Devine. I'm Mark Curtis. Let's get right to the latest forecast as we look ahead to what's in store for your Friday. Meteorologist Lindsay Riley has been tracking the storm all week long and Lens, what's it looking like right now? Well, it's here and it is raining across parts of the valley, all of which very light, but enough to wet the pavement. You can see right over central Phoenix, extending up toward Cave Creek and down into Pinal County. All of this moisture moving from south to north, and we will keep this chance for rain across the lower deserts through tomorrow afternoon. You can see it building back toward Pima County. A couple lightning strikes as well. We'll see additional thunderstorm activity into tomorrow afternoon still dry out towards Safford that will change and the snow has filled in for the high country from Flagstaff all the way basically to show low snow expected to continue overnight. Here's our valley hour by hour rain chance and it's going to pick up in intensity again around 6 a.m. and we'll have spotty showers and thunderstorms through tomorrow afternoon, few of which may produce some small hail, gusty winds and even the potential for some blowing dust. Now we'll take you up north the Flagstaff area that snow that you just saw on radar expected to continue at a pretty heavy clip all throughout the overnight till about noon time tomorrow, and then it will become more scattered during the afternoon. Out to the east, that heavy band of snow that's going to impact Flagstaff tonight, that will be moving east toward the White Mountains after noon time tomorrow and extending through about 10 p.m. So that's when we'll see the heaviest snow across eastern Arizona. We will look at snow amounts and also time out the rain a little bit closer here in the valley coming up in your full forecast. Mark. All right, Lindsay, we'll see you then. Tonight, there are new developments in a tragic crash that killed two people and wounded 17 others in Goodyear. Today, we learn the man who police say was behind the wheel of a pickup that crashed into a group of cyclists is facing several new charges. 12 News journalist Gabriella Becerra is in Goodyear tonight covering the latest developments, and she has reaction from the cycling community on these new charges. Some members of the West Valley cycling community tell me they're disappointed. These are misdemeanor charges and not felony. They say several lives were changed the day of the crash and they want the driver to be held accountable. Nearly three weeks after the one year anniversary of a deadly crash, Pedro Quintana Lujan faces 11 new misdemeanor charges for allegedly driving into a group of cyclists. Goodyear police say Quintana Lujan plowed into the cyclists on the Cotton Lane Bridge after claiming his steering wheel locked up. Cyclists Karen Melissa and David Caro died in the crash. 17 others were injured. The Goodyear City Prosecutor's filing comes after the National Transportation Safety Board revealed its investigation found nothing wrong with the truck steering. Police initially referred manslaughter and aggravated assault charges to Maricopa County Attorney Rachel Mitchell, but in November she decided not to prosecute, saying there wasn't enough evidence. At the time, crash survivor Clay Wells told 12 News he was disappointed with Mitchell's decision. The word here is reckless. And when you see 18 bodies laying in the middle of Cotton Lane in various states of injury and death, and the bodies were scattered for almost 600 feet, I don't see how you can't argue recklessness. 
Some members of the West Valley Cycling Group don't think misdemeanor charges are enough to bring justice to this case. Paul Thiessen telling me in a statement, it's a nightmare that has changed my life and many of my friends forever. Quintana Lujan is expected to be back in court on April 10th. Reporting in Goodyear, Gabriela Becerra, 12 News. All right, Gabby, thank you. New at 10, there are new developments in a string of Valley burglaries. A suspect who's already been indicted in one incident is now being linked to seven other burglaries. Investigators say that 20-year-old Sue Ellen Gutierrez will be facing several burglary and trespassing charges, all related to incidents that occurred between January 24th and February 12th. Phoenix police say that they're still actively investigating each incident. Developing tonight in Glendale, police are investigating a burglary at the Tanger outlets near Glendale and 95th Avenue. They say several masked men jumped out of a van and stole packages from a delivery truck just before noon. The truck was carrying merchandise from several stores. Police tell us the men loaded up their van and drove off. Investigators were able to track down the suspects near 79th Avenue and McDowell and seven people were taken into custody. So far, police haven't released the names of those suspects. The seventh suspect in the Preston Lord murder case pled not guilty in court this morning. 18 year old Treston Billy was the last of the seven suspects to be arrested. His hearing happened this morning, a day after the other six co-defendants. They're charged with first degree murder and kidnapping for what officials allege they did to Lord outside of a Halloween house party in Queen Creek. Billy and two other suspects are also charged with aggravated robbery. All suspects have entered not guilty pleas. East Valley community members sat in the courtroom in support of Lord's family. Unfortunately, the Lords um, had, they were not able to attend today, and it was really important that uh, Preston was represented today in court. These arrests and seeing these people in cuffs and, and being escorted by police, it very much makes all this real. All seven suspects are due back in court on April 30th. A former MCSO detention officer will spend the next two years behind bars. A judge handed down that sentence today after Andres Salazar pleaded guilty to helping smuggle fentanyl and meth into jail. The issue of drugs in jail is a problem the sheriff's office has been trying to solve for years. 12 News journalist Chase Golightly joins us from the newsroom tonight with what steps have been taken. Chase? Mark, hundreds of inmates over the years have been rushed to the hospital for overdoses. Some didn't make it out alive. Now, a former detention officer caught bringing these same drugs in was sentenced for the crime. He was hired to protect and serve jails operated by the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Instead, 28-year-old Andreas Salazar was caught in a drug ring trying to bring fentanyl and meth inside. I'm disgusted. Former Sheriff Paul Pinzone made the announcement last year, saying it was discovered during a four-week investigation into Salazar. We have strong reason to believe this was his first attempt. Uh, exceptional work by our investigators put them in a position to intercept him before he brought the drugs into the jail. Pinzone says Salazar was working with inmates to bring the drugs in. When they caught him in the act, they found about 60 grams of meth and about 100 fentanyl pills. Now, all this time later, on Thursday, the former detention officer was sentenced to two years in prison. But the problem of drugs like fentanyl in county jails remains. In 2022, more than 170 inmates overdosed, with 17 dying in custody in Maricopa County jails. That trend continued to grow in 2023, with 200 inmates rushed to the hospital for overdosing. The sheriff's office seizing a record number of fentanyl, with people using batteries, bullet cartridges, and even face masks. Leading to Penzone installing body scanners at jails requiring everyone, including workers, to pass through them. Some form of search to make sure that we're not contributing to the problem and violating the law. Three other people are accused of working with Salazar. They include two inmates and an accused drug dealer. All three were recently indicted by a grand jury for their, their alleged role in this drug ring. We're live in the newsroom. Chase Golightly, 12 News. All right, Chase, thank you for that report. Tempe firefighters had to run for their lives earlier this week after nearly being hit by a speeding car. Fire officials shared this video with us, and it shows the firefighters enjoying some downtime in the parking lot playing pickleball. When that car that you see there speeds into the parking lot, just barely missing the firefighters. The car stopped after crashing into a fire hydrant and also several other parked cars. 
The firefighters wasted no time jumping in to do what they are trained to do, helping that driver who was then later taken to the hospital. A pretty scary situation. You know, you're out there you know, having some fun with your, your uh, co-workers between calls and uh, you turn around you hear a loud noise and then next thing you know you're running for your life. They said once the vehicle came to arrest though, you know, they came over and made sure that it wasn't going to go anywhere and hit anything else. Uh, and then they started rendering medical aid. At that point, it's like any other incident. The cars that were hit belonged to the firefighters at the station. The city is now looking into what changes could be made to make the station safer. Still ahead, you still have a chance to have your artwork feature on Arizona's Election Day voting stickers. But time is running out to submit your idea. Plus, the details of today's test launch of SpaceX's most powerful rocket, which NASA hopes will one day carry people back to the moon. And we'll tell you about the Gilbert native who will soon be up in space herself after completing all the training to become a NASA astronaut. We're also getting a look at what Today in AZ is working on for tomorrow morning. Here's Emily Pritchard with more. Thanks so much. And we have a busy Friday morning ahead right here on 12 News Today in AZ. Our winter storm continues. Friday is our best chance for action. Our weather team is tracking. And it's Water Watch Friday, a valley mom turning tragedy into triumph. We hope you'll join us and we'll help you get ready for your Friday and also your weekend starting at our new earlier time, 426 AM for 12 News Today in AZ. But for now, more 12 News at 10 o'clock is ahead.